The eyes do not see what the mind doesn't know. Good morning all. I'm Dr. Dania John, Assistant Professor, Department of Conservative Dentistry, here to discuss about the topic crack tooth syndrome. Now, the lack of awareness and because of the bizarre clinical condition it presents, it makes it a major diagnostic challenge in clinical practice. As we know that fracture of a tooth can contribute to severe pain in a patient. Now, if this fracture is incomplete, then the clinical signs and symptoms it presents can be very subtle and this can mimic other clinical conditions which generally contribute to pain such as apical periodontitis or due to caries, gum disease, etc. So now this is quite challenging. So proper uh, diagnosis and appropriate treatment at the right time can actually contribute to the success of such clinical conditions. So let's look into what is crack tooth syndrome. Crack tooth syndrome may be defined as a fracture plane of unknown depth and direction passing through the tooth structure that may progress or may not progress to communicate with the pulp and the periodontal ligament. In simple words, it is nothing but incomplete fracture of a tooth with a vital pulp. Now earlier, this condition was termed as cuspal fracture odontalgia by Dr. Jip in 1954. Later, it was termed as crack tooth syndrome by Dr. Cameron in 1964. Now, why do teeth crack? It may be because of the restorative procedures which we generally do, which can include over preparation of cavities or in a clinical condition where you are supposed to give adequate cuspal coverage and you have failed to do so or during insertion of indirect restorations such as inlay and only you have applied too much of pressure because hydraulic pressure can contribute to fracture of a tooth and where once this uh, fracture or some crack appear you will never detect it because it will be over covered by the your restorations again physical forces while placement of certain direct restoration such as amalgam, such as when you condense an amalgam or when you are going to condense and compact your direct filling gold, because of the excess of pressure you apply, it can contribute to fracture of tooth. Other causes include occlusal factors, which can include trauma from occlusion, sudden or excessive biting force, such as on a piece of a bone, or because if the patient has some parafunctional habits such as bruxism, clenching, etc. And in some clinical conditions due to developmental factors, such as in some patients, because of the incomplete fusion of the teeth that occurs in areas where calcification is not complete, can also contribute or it can also make the teeth more prone to such fractures. Now, depending upon the type and extent of fracture, the clinical conditions can vary from crease lines, split tooth, fractured cusp, or a vertical root fracture. Now, let's see what is crease lines. So, this crease line is type of fracture which is going to be restricted to the enamel itself. So if you look into the clinical diagram which is there, you can see that the extent of these fracture lines or crease lines is occlusogingival or incisogingival and it is restricted within the enamel itself. Now this can occur because of the occlusal forces or because of trauma from occlusion and so on. Now generally the patient is asymptomatic and it doesn't cause much problems. But uh, when the patient comes to you in your clinic, because of uh, your observation, you would have noticed it. And some patients are generally very aesthetically concerned. So they might approach you with such clinical conditions. All you have to do is you can remove, if there is any form of defect, 
or in fact no treatment is needed if the patient is completely asymptomatic if the patient is very much aesthetically concerned about it then you can consider giving a direct restoration such as composite or even veneers your second condition is fractured cusp terminating in the cervical part of the tooth so now this in the diagram you can see that this is not restricted to the crown alone it is there is a certain amount of cervical margin of the tooth is getting involved here so generally this type of fracture can extend mesiodistally or facio-lingually and this usually occurs uh, because you if the patient comes to you with a caries and you haven't you have failed to provide sufficient cuspal coverage uh, to an undermined cusp or because of certain habits of the patient such as parafunctional habits etc it can result in this clinical condition so once the cusp has fractured and uh, due to the dentinal fluid movements that occurs the patient can present with sharp pain especially on mastication or sometimes with cold because the dentin is exposed in such conditions and uh, in order to wish when you when the patient presses to you clinically you have to clinically observe it and you have to find out where is the fracture and give an la and remove that the fractured fragment now once you remove the fractured fragment you will be able to judge properly what is the extent of the fracture a radiograph will also come in uh, use in such cases the uh, treatment is after you remove this cusp if there is palpal involvement you can opt for a root canal followed by a crown and suppose if there is no uh, palpal involvement you can even opt for a class 2 uh, coronal restoration such as a inlay or an onlay and so on and the prognosis of such cases is actually very good your third condition is that of a cracked tooth so in this diagram if you look closely that here you can see that the crack is not ex is not restricted to the crown portion it might extend into the root so here the prognosis can vary from questionable to poor depending upon the extent of this fracture now usually it will extend mesiodistally and the origin is generally from the occlusal surface so again the etiology can remain the same such as due to some damaging habits such as bruxism parafunctional habits so on or the tooth is weakened due to some caries etc and the symptoms of such a case can it's highly variable the patient might present with certain uh, high sensitivity etc to no clinical symptoms at all now uh, how do you identify is generally Uh, such when cracked tooth usually occurs in a tooth which is which has a very large restoration say for example an amalgam restoration so in order to diagnose or when in order to see such a crack one will have to remove the old restoration and take help of magnification loops or a, mag, a mi magnification microscope to observe and see to detect this cracked tooth now if the extend depending upon the extent of this uh, crack you can go for a root canal followed by a crown and if the patient is uh, completely uh, is still uh, symptom symptomatic even after such a treatment you will have to go for a extraction because the prognosis in such cases will be poor so it can vary greatly depending upon the extent of the crack now in order to prevent such conditions if the patient is into some habits so uh, generally the such patients will have some patients will have the habit of ha chewing on ice and they'll try to uh, break it with their teeth and chew it up so such patients are more prone to clinical conditions like cracked tooth and uh, you can also opt for uh, inlay and onlay or even orthodontic band can be put for such cases uh, for as a part of the treatment next is split tooth so split tooth is slightly different from the earlier condition of cracked tooth so here if you observe in the diagram you can see that 
the crack is actually extending from the coronal to the root portion and if you try to separate this segment it will it is going to be completely two distinct segment in such cases the prognosis is very poor and all you can do is to opt for extraction so that is a clinical condition picture so here you can see that uh, there is if you uh, you can see a fractured tooth in the diagram if you take your probe and uh, pass your probe through the fracture you will see that both the segments are mobile and once you extract the tooth you can see that it is completely split another condition is vertical root fracture now vertical root fracture is a longitudinally oriented fracture of the root that originates from the apex of the root and propagates to the coronal part now here also the prognosis is quite poor and all you can opt is for an extraction now if you look into the epidemiology the incidence rate can vary from 34 to 74 percentage generally it affects individuals of age 30 to 50 years and the mandibular first molar is the most more prone to such conditions followed by maxillary premolar maxillary molar and mandibular premolar now why mandibular first molar is more prone to such cases such cases because mandibular first molar are the one of the first permanent teeth to erupt and they are more prone to caries and uh, trauma uh, during the uh, during its uh, time period when compared to other teeth now this makes it more susceptible to fracture now coming into the clinical features usually the patient complains of pain especially on biting that ceases after the pressure has been withdrawn this is a very classical sign now again the clinical feature is a very bizarre it's very bizarre it can vary from individual to individual from cases to cases that's why it becomes such a big challenge to diagnose this condition so generally the pain, this uh, the predominant symptom is there'll be some form of discomfort or pain especially when the patient bites or when the patient chews or mastigates especially on hard foods such as if the food has if it is going to be a fruit with a seed the moment the patient bites on the seed the patient is going to have severe pain now again if sub, depending upon the extent of this crack or each clinical condition the patient can present to you with a sharp piercing pain during mastication or they might uh, present with a pain due, due to due, during thermal changes especially cold or the patient will simply say he is highly hypersensitive to to all the thermal changes now this will actually depend upon the depth of the crack now so therefore pain can actually range from mild to excruciating pain either during the initiation or release of biting pressure now in certain clinical condition you will see that the more the occlusal force is given the greater the will be the pain so such are the clinical catch where you should suspect crack tooth syndrome now this pain that occurs on release of pressure upon intake of fibrous food is is known as rebound pain okay now if it is only a mild crack and it is extended to the dentin patient will also can also present to you with a clinical condition where he says that on consumption of sugar i am having severe pain or during the act while they are eating during mastigating or due to during extrusive mandibular movements also they can elicit pain and uh, those patients who are who have uh, certain habits like biting on the chewing on eyes or who have got this para functional habits and already a crack tooth syndrome had come to that patient then sometimes the patient itself will be able to diagnose the condition and but often in 90% of the cases the patient will not be able to clinically locate which is the offending tooth so you should keep in mind about this syndrome called crack tooth syndrome 
Now, what are other factors that are to be considered while, while opting for treatment options for such conditions? One, what is the type and site of the crack? Is there any risk associated with it? Such as if the patient has got some parafunctional habits, first you should try to uh, treat that. Then the extent of the crack, if is there any pathological process associated with it and the direction of the crack. Now, generally, such teeth, if you check for vitality, it is going to be vital. And uh, generally, the tooth is not tender to percussion, as in the case of apical periodontitis. But the patient will have a complain of sharp throbbing pain. So immediately, what comes in your mind is that maybe it is a condition of chronic pulpitis. But the moment you check for tender on percussion, the patient will be asymptomatic. But if you are going, if suppose in certain, if you try to take a probe and uh, you apply pressure on a particular cusp, the patient will suddenly complain of pain. So then you should suspect this cracked tooth. And also you'll be able to see that the pain is going to increase as the occlusal force is going to increase and relief is going to occur once the pressure is withdrawn. Either this or the patient will say that on release of this pressure, there is severe pain, that is rebound pain. So like this, the clinical feature can vary from each clinical condition. So after your, uh, in order to diagnose this, you will have to clinically examine and take help of other diagnostic tools, which I'll be discussing later. So if suppose there's a large restoration as seen in the diagram, uh, you will not, you will never be able to find out if there is a fracture. So your only option is to remove the entire restoration and observe for any fracture. Or you can also, you should also check if there is any form of periodontal defect with the help of your periodontal probe. So if it is a case of vertical root fracture, you will be able to notice that there is isolated deep pockets, which may be around 10 millimeter or so in such a tooth which has which has vertical root fracture. Okay, so sometimes your sinus tract, uh, including a narrow isolated probing defect, is generally seen. In and uh, it is more pro more common in a tooth which has undergone root canal treatment and no sufficient uh, crown was placed for such tooth. Now, in order to check, in order to help us in this diagnosis, you can depend upon certain tests such as dye test. So generally we use methylene blue or gentian violet. So the moment you apply it on this tooth, this dye will help in staining that fracture line. You can also go for bite test. Bite test means the patient is asked to bite on uh, structures such as tooth sleuth or a rubber abrasive wheel or even a toothpick. The moment the patient bites on it, or you can use orange wood sticks, the, or commercially available tooth sleuth also you can use. And the moment the patient is going to bite on it, the patient will have pain, or especially on, especially on release. That is rebound pain is a very important classic sign of cracked tooth. Another method is to use transillumination. So trans elimination means you when you are you when you are going to apply you know that enamel that is your tooth is a translucent structure okay so when you are going to apply light from one side when you are going to trans illuminate it it is going to allow the light to pass to the opposite side but if there is a crack the light will not transmit so that is also one method radiographic examination is usually not so inconclusive because uh, you will, because the most of the time the crack is going to extend in a mesodistal direction. Therefore, not much radiographic change is going to occur unless it is a case of a vertical root fracture which was there and there has been uh, a lesion has developed. Usually the lesion will be J-shaped. So then you should suspect your vertical root fracture. But if it is another condition such as split tooth, etc., you will not be able to uh, diagnose it so well because radiographically there won't be much changes. Your best method will be to take help of microscopes. So the mic in the microscope up to 16x magnification is possible. 
and will be after you remove a particular restoration suppose if there's a large restoration after you remove you'll be easily be able to detect such cracks even magnification loops can also help to a certain extent but in the only in the microscope magnification up to 16x etc is possible another indirect diagnostic method by which we which was suggested by banerji et al was uh, simply place composite resin over the tooth without any etching and bonding and uh, the one if the patient is going to feel there is marked improvement in the pain then you must suspect crack tooth syndrome because here the composite is going to keep the tooth segments together okay so that is basically it is going to act as a splint so this is an indirect diagnostic method second method another method is to place a orthodontic band over the tooth so again that will also help in holding the segments you know together so once the uh, once the, when you apply pressure when the segments are going to separate there is actually dentinal fluid movement that is occurring and that is uh, resulting in that is the one which is resulting in pain for the patient so the moment the segments are brought together and the crack is uh, closed the patient will get relief from the pain so then you should suspect this condition now let's see what is the management okay so we saw various clinical scenario where the crack can vary in depth in the extent etc suppose if it is only a superficial crack then it is very easy first of all in order and it, you can easily detect it also so simply you, all you have to do is just remove the uh, defect if it is uh, extending only up to 1 by 4th of the enamel or if it is just a minor crack you can just go for a direct composite restoration or in fact if needed you can go for a crown itself if it is a deep crack crack with pulpal involvement then you can offer root canal treatment followed by a crown in order to protect the tooth and the prognosis of such cases are generally very good and it's successful but suppose the crack is extending into the root of the tooth beneath the bone that is subgingivally then it is difficult to control uh, and prevent micro leakage and so on in such cases and you will have to go for extraction at the earlier time itself and go for a dental implant or a dental bridge the more you delay that means the more delay you are going to diagnose the condition and give treatment to the patient maybe a big lesion can develop and the chance of the patient to have a successful implant you are actually reducing it so let's uh, see what is the take home message so once you have diagnosed this cracked tooth if the patient has only mild cold sensitivity or mild bite pain because maybe the extent of the crack is only that much all if you can do a provisional crown suppose the symptoms are getting resolved go for a permanent crown suppose the symptoms are going to continue go for a root canal followed by a crown now if the symptoms are still continuing okay then you can go for extraction because that's the only option suppose a patient is complaining of severe cold sensitivity spontaneous pain pulp necrosis etc go for root canal followed by a crown and if the symptoms are going to resolve you will go for a permanent crown but remember that such cases you have to keep reviewing every 6 months because already the tooth is weakened so you have to keep checking if there is any changes that is happening and suppose even after you do a root canal and even after you give a crown the symptoms are continuing means your only option is to go for extraction so what all other things which you are going to do to prevent this condition so if some some clinical conditions are within our scope that means when you are going to prepare a cavity you prepare it in a very conservative man, manner as possible and make sure that your internal line angles are rounded because you don't want to create any sharp line angles where there will be internal stress or if it is a clinical condition where there is a, your extent of caries is such a way that you have to provide cuspal coverage 
do not fail to do so. That means in your design of your cast restoration, try to include, involve that particular cusp which is weakened instead of excluding it. So again, you can prevent such clinical cases. And again, during the insertion of the scars restoration, make sure that you don't apply too much of pressure in such a way that this fracture can occur. Suppose uh, if it is a case where you have to place pins and give support to the tooth structure, make sure that the pins are actually placed into the dentin. And make sure that if there are more than one pin or two pins, make sure that there is sufficient uh, uh, gap between the two pins. Because the more closer the pins are placed, the more stress is going to accumulate there. Then if the patient has some uh, uh, trauma from occlusion or there is some form of eccentric contacts are present, check with the help of an articulating paper and reduce all such eccentric contacts so that the patient will not be prone to such conditions. There are certain uh, clinical uh, conditions where there may be a developmental defect, such as uh, there may be an extra cusp, such as talons cusp, or uh, uh, this on the premolar, there may be an extra cusp. Uh, so if it is in an elevated manner, the, when the patient is going to bite, the force, the entire force is going to be directed to that particular tooth. So if you are able to diagnose that case fast, the fast when the patient is going to come to you, you can reduce such high points in the patient and you can save that particular tooth from cracked tooth. So like as a conclusion, we must all know that every practitioner should be aware that there are there is a condition called cracked tooth syndrome. You should be knowledgeable enough to diagnose it and take give appropriate treatment at the right time. And always a good history and careful clinical examination will actually contribute to the success of such teeth. And again, remember that the treatment will always vary depending upon the position and extent of crack. So, thank you and have a good day.